an alternate universe, season two ended with Steed calling Ed babe. David Jenkins said season three would be about how challenging it is to keep a relationship together. What does that mean for actual season three possibilities? And Reese Darby is up to something. Something I tell you. These headlines and more ahead on the Gay Pirate News Hour from the Our Flag Means Fan Fiction Podcast. Today is November 2nd, 2024, and this is the Gay Pirate News Hour from the Our Flag Means Fan Fiction Podcast. Today on the show, we have someone who I am not jealous of at all, someone who I am very happy for because they get to have incredible experiences with Con O'Neill and... Krill, I'm just so thrilled that you're on the show and that you're living your best life and that clearly you're God's favorite. I'm really on this week. <laughs> and also on the, the show this week is Abby. You might know Abby from the Our Flag Means Death weekly recaps. Abby, where can people find those weekly re recaps that you do? A couple of different places. So it's the website for the repository is ofmd-renewal-repo.knowledgeowl.com. I know it's a long one. It's I, I'm getting the site free, so I have to keep it branded. But otherwise, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr and now Blue Sky at just OFMD Recaps. No okay, per perfect. And you're also Gentle Beards Bar and Grill on Tumblr yes. and Abby on socials. And also, Ringa is here. Ringa, Ringa is also someone who I'm not jealous of at all. And I've never been jealous of in my entire life because Ringa is also Khan's <laughs> best friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, not best, but also yeah. on the show this week are people who get to talk to Khan O'Neill and just like have this wonderful time with. And so, I, Ringo, what have you I been I do on? have a wonderful time with him. Yes. <laughs> He's good for a good time. What am I up to? What am I doing? Hi, I made it. Hey, I didn't think you'd be able to make it, so I'm glad you're here. See you I there. love this it's hair, on. Carly. Thank you. Isn't it great? It's really pretty. It is. It's a $15 wig that I, I got on Amazon. You did really good with it. Sometimes uh -huh. the Amazon wigs can be very sketchy. Well, you know, it's a... It, it's luck of the draw. But my first question to you all is what is like the temperature of the fandom this week? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Carly Heath. With a great wig. Hi, Carly. <laughs> I'm I have different hair every time we do this. So I want to hear from you guys. What's the temperature in the fandom lately? Oh, what's the vibe in the fandom been like? I don't know. Pretty chill, actually. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it really depends on the site you're on. Because, like, <laughs> Twitter is just a dumpster fire at all times. Yeah. But yes. then, like, Blue Sky Accurate. and Tumblr is pretty chill. So I, I think see, it... Yeah. Like, Blue Sky seems like it, it's what I heard Twitter was like before I joined the fandom. Not that I'm taking uh, yeah. before I got involved and everything was, like, already kicking off. Like, Blue Sky seems, like, fairly chill. Counts decides to, like, unlock itself. My apps decides to stop breaking. It's really, really nice on there. Nice. Yeah. And AO3, we've passed, what, like 35,000 mix on AO3. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. And I, we you know, it's been a while since we've done our validation from strangers on the internet. So I will say that Bryn wrote in to say, listen to many hours of the podcast during Ooh. the two plus months of costume design and creation. They did a really excellent Steed cos cosplay. Laughing emoji. Thank you for the inspo and the company. Thank you, guys. Yay. Yay. Friends of the light. I love Bryn. When Friends we want to encourage everyone to feel free to write in and give us you know give us reviews and ratings on tell us we're platform. great tell us we're great we need validation yeah we do <laughs> or else we, we might not do this anymore if you don't tell us you love us we might just quit we might just walk away and then you wouldn't want that to happen would you that'd be sad i would be very sad yeah podcast update by the way those who brought you our flag means fan fiction are bringing you a new podcast every thursday our Flag Means Fan Fiction is not going anywhere, but we are adding to your listening pleasure with the Haunted Hollywood Hour, where we cover 100% true paranormal and creepy stories every week set in and around Hollywood. I know Ring is going to be on an upcoming episode. Anyone who wants to talk about any spookiness 
come on, be on the podcast. We'll talk about it. The first five episodes are available now. Don't miss episode five. It's my absolute favorite where we talk about like a actual reincarnation story that deals with past lives and proof of past lives. Oh, wow. And then on Thursday, we are dropping a important episode on the Heidi Plank disappearance, which has been kind of consuming Los Angeles for the past three years. And if you are outside of Los Angeles, I have no idea if you know what the Heidi Plank disappearance is, but it's this crazy story of this woman who was a mom who went missing and her dog was discovered on the 28th floor of a random luxury high rise in downtown Los Angeles. And what happened? She, her dog's on this building. She's gone. What happened? So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. We talk about, so this is, this is the great thing. We talk about our, our flag means death and we talk about actual death. Hopefully not death, but you know, weird death. Actual death. Real quick, I opened Instagram to post about this and Mm -hmm. Rita has posted a video of her and Taika getting ready in their Halloween costumes. Oh, they did a really great cosplay. So that is breaking news right this minute. Oh my goodness. There's new Taika content. (laughs) Yeah, they did a really great cosplay of Mask of Zero where... Rita is the Catherine Zeta Jones character, and Taika is the Anthony Banderas Zora. Oh and they, and, they look Antonio. 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 Did I call him Anthony? I call him Anthony. That's only what his besties <laughs> get to call him. <laughs> Anthony Bendero. I love how sometimes my the things that are not <laughs> what my brain is, is saying. That's just how it goes. Oh my gosh. I, I have to say, though, Anthony like, Bandero. it is not fair that they are allowed to cosplay those people because that was like one of my bisexual awakenings Ooh, when i was younger yeah. and i'm just like god damn it Taika, you're hot enough stop they like, are come on man <laughs> well Taika and rita both are extremely both. beautiful people yes yeah ridiculously and then they're cosplaying beautiful people it's like okay overstimulation <laughs> yeah so many okay david let's get into david okay. jenkins news today is the anniversary of it was always woken gay jim shall we do oh. shall we do a little recap of where it was always woken j- gay jim came like, from go for it okay one, i don't remember what the who wants to tell said. that story one year ago today some guy said something about his, his show it's really oh, important that we that we okay then you have to name. tell it i don't know that i don't know <laughs> his name was jim alaska jim alaska <laughs> i forget that <laughs> his name was jim alaska and he <laughs> replied he he replied on some post about our flag means death saying something like oh the show was pretty good but then it went downhill when it started to become woke and gay <laughs> and the fandom was like wait, wait, wait. when was it not woke and gay? which is like what they always do with things that have always been this way you know mm-hmm. like like star trek like they're like when did it get woke i'm like that's it, the whole yeah. freaking point man people love to do that especially like around election time when people will comment on something and they'll be like when did this get political and they'll be like oh here Here's all of my years and years and years worth of politics. Like, come on. Especially a couple of times in Green Day as well. So that's like what I've seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the gay pirate show. (laughs) And and so David Jenkins wrote in reply to Jim Alaska, it was always woke and gay, Jim. And that is just probably the best tweet ever tweeted on the history of Twitter. I don't know about that. (laughs) It's just bangers personally. it's succinct. It's like a it's, nice it's, little. It's um, really good. I will give it that. It's really good. It's a. I know a lot of people have that as their like Twitter um, like titles. Yeah, it was profile. always looking gay. Yeah, and uh, Chloe, our co-host on this podcast, sometimes uh, her Twitter oh, yeah. handle is Woken Gay. Yeah. Oh, that's her. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There are so many people across all the different like platforms with slightly different names, and so once yeah. in a while, I'll just be like, Oh my gosh, I know exactly who you are now. Yeah, you have to tell me your exact like whatever twitter says about you when you pop up to let me know who you are because people will be like oh you know bethany and i'm like who's bethany i don't i don't know these people's real names i know them as woken gay jim bob you know like (laughs) and i i when woken gay happened i said i really want a woken gay pendant and someone made one for me and it was it was great i love it i treasure it forever david jenkins also 
on October 24th, tweeted, season one is about Steed's midlife crisis and Mm. season two is about Ed's. Season three would be about how challenging it is to keep a relationship together. Even when you love each other, you don't necessarily grow at the same time. The important point is that he said would be, not would have been. Yeah, there's your bowl of clown noses. Oh, right here, right here. He said (laughs) would be. I love it. My my child stole my clown nose, so I don't know where it is. I've got like a chapstick oh, that's nice. red. That's nice. Really has a lot of them. She's got enough for I, all of us. And I have a kazoo here if needed. It's an emergency because <laughs> should we need to go in that direction? I to go home and couldn't, so um, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You've got enough red going on, Krill. So did yeah, you do? <laughs> did the use of would be change anyone's opinions or on the trajectory of season three possibility? happening in the universe at some time i was no. i was fully convinced it was because i'm um, sander posted on a sto- no, not some it was either sander or matt or someone posted something on their story that made it sound like it was going to happen and they deleted the story but i can't remember who because i was i was doing something else at the time i yeah. missed that bit of news <laughs> but like it was the day before he announced that the cancellation would happen i can't remember who it was i think it was either sander or matt or Possibly or possibly Vico, but I can't remember who the fuck it was. So there were a couple. There was the thing with David with the giant our flag means yeah. death thing. Yeah. And then like Vico said something. And then somebody posted that picture of like a mini script for like two seconds and yeah. then it was gone and we could not oh. find it. Like I looked for it for like a month. It is like gone from the internet. Wow. I miss that news. Well, that happened. That was like a sort of flashbang in January and then it was deleted like after mm-hmm. the announcement. Yeah. Like, I think and talk to the execs or something. Yeah. Then- that that's all just like proof that, was- that this was like on you know on the track going and then it got like knocked over but you know we had a great train robbery and max were the robbers and i think that this what he said just recently doesn't change anything for me because i think that this whole time everybody wants to do a season three and everybody is on board to do a season three and if it ever gets you know picked up or whatever it's gonna happen Mm -hmm. but so Mm -hmm. i don't think that means anything new i think it's just like an ongoing if we can do it in any way possible we will you know Mm -hmm. so that's where the like yeah possible like you know feeling comes from but i don't think it that in particular means anything new yeah 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 cool yeah someone in the chat said give the cat a clown nose please oh my god yeah last time you gave the cat a clown nose and it entertained us all there you go oh i love it (laughs) this is the best i am a cat content fiend last time that that cat batted the clown nose around on the ground for like the last 10 minutes of the video it oh my great. gosh <laughs> he's definitely in sleepy mode right now we'll see if he gets a little bit more excited as this goes on uh, let's hear from the people in the chat mr button says abby uh, mr. Button's hi. mr buttons also says hi all i hope you have had a great halloween i will say at my work my work i did not realize goes all out on halloween we have like a nine story building and every single floor got decorated to the nines and one floor did what we do in the shadows theme it was so good they all dressed up as characters from what we do in the shadows they were all Mm -hmm. like perfect so on our walls we have a lot of huge murals of classic movies and classic movie actors and they put like little fangs on all of those murals (laughs) i love that amazing did you guys all have a happy halloween yeah i hosted a a party at the bar and actually the winners of the costume contest were a laszlo and a couple oh, oh yeah. Hell yeah they looked very good and i didn't take any fucking pictures because i was in host mode and running around and going crazy and it was like an insane amount of people like i don't know if i've ever seen that many people in the bar so had a very good time but it was packed m baldo says hi oh by the way oh, that's uh, marty oh hi marty Marty Marty. says, hi, y'all. And Dole Mount says, yo. And Maura Laurel Lurus says, said, give the cat another clown nose. Marty Uh, was dressed as the gay Mothman uh, pride flag at our party, actually. Yes. Do they celebrate Halloween on in in the 
in your country in <laughs> your country your ambiguous in, country we basically in my in my ambiguous in my ambiguous country you absolutely cannot tell which one it is and how i'm speaking we <laughs> both by getting incredibly drunk at the weekend but um we don't do we don't do it proper i actually didn't do anything i slept through the whole day because i've just moved house and it took out of me illness wise so i was in mm. bed like we do we do it sometimes but you have to have like organized parties and then it's yeah it's just it's drink wine well, it's the same way the brits celebrate every holiday to be completely yeah. different. i'm excited to hear if any of our listeners are from another country do you celebrate halloween if so how do you celebrate it I'm very curious. Other David Jenkins news. There was a long Twitter thread, David replying to and posting about other writers and who came up with the different jokes on the show. That was interesting. Yeah. yeah. I like that behind the scenes stuff. And anyone remember some some interesting moments from that? Twitter conversation. You know yeah. Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I wasn't really watching it play out in live time. So I just kind of came upon it at the end. But I love hearing about all of those. And I, of course, Tyke had come up with the papes. Come yeah. on. It's totally a Tyke <laughs> thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that David Jenkins came up with the cake toppers. Yes. That oh. is such a visual, iconic, yeah. amazing thing. I'm going to be like, if I ever teach like another class on storytelling, I'm going to, that's going to be like the thing I talk about in class. I'm like, here, let's talk about storytelling. Let's talk about visual character going through a thing. How do you Mm -hmm. show a character going through something, but also kind of in like a, a funny way, but also in a, like a deep way. And the cake toppers. When the cake topper thing drops, so my mum is a massive, she's a massive, 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 like Ed and Steve fan. She, she's, she, right, my mum's writing fic. She's got the merch. People give oh, me stuff yes. mum at conventions at this point. Yeah, so she was asking, okay, what? So she, she finished, it was after the, no, it was after the trailer dropped, I think. And she was like, okay, I need to watch something queer. So I was like, okay, watch Red, White, Royal, Blue. And she's like, it was fine, but there's nobody painting cake toppers who look like themselves and their ex. <laughs> so what kind of queer media is that? <laughs> Your mum sounds amazing. <laughs> Your mom sounds so cool. Yeah. You're like, you know what? I think it is. I think it's like English moms because not English. She's Welsh. Don't call her English. Oh please. shoot! Oh, oh shoot! shit! My bad. Oh no! Oh no! Oh shit! Krill's mom is coming for you because <laughs> Hattie, her dragon Hattie, who is Baby Kraken Podfix, she her mom also is super into our flag means death and is a super like the OG <laughs> Nathan Fode fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes, anyway. that's funny. I think uh, maybe it's just American boomers just are not the same. My mom can't even figure out how to watch it. She has like some weird, like generic knockoff cable thing where you can sort of watch on demand, but not really. So she can see whatever Max is playing like at the moment, but not anything on demand and i can't even bring a usb stick and like plug it into our tv it won't let me change the input oh, wow. i'm like what kind of nonsense have you gotten yourself involved in here so <laughs> she can't figure it out so i gave up on her but she's got like the massive bootleg roku or something from it's the weirdest thing i've never seen anything <laughs> like it and then like a- about two years ago she was like there's this tv show it's called What We Do in the Shadows. And I'm like, Mom, I've been trying to get you to watch that movie since it came out. Like, she's she's special. She's in the woods. She doesn't know things. It's the American education system. Let's play uh, it. It is. Or lack yes. of one. Yes. Uh, so, so a quick rundown of uh, who came up with what jokes. Ed calling the rabbit a wolf was Eliza Cossio. Uh, when, and David said when she was writing the episode, I remember pitching her that Blackbeard should spill his guts to a rabbit and she yes anded it to the extreme and had him really monologue to the little guy. Alex Sherman's favorite season two line was I saw her boobs both of them. That's so good. Summer teeth and we go way back was possibly Yvonne and that moves us to Con O'Neill news and I'm going to hand things over to Krill who I'm not jealous of at all and who I'm happy for, (laughs) who I'm extremely happy for. (laughs) Krill, tell us how you were accosted 
assaulted, assaulted even by oh, Con O'Neill. Physically, that. Twitter's going to take that and run with it. I'm going to get us in the neck for the next week now. So I just want to clarify. So when I first got, so when the when the film premiere was announced, when the men was announced, I was in California. I was coming back from, I was actually going through security at LAX when the tickets were announced. And the friend who I'm staying with currently, I was going to text her and be like, Katie, we need to go. She was already, she, and then I opened WhatsApp and she was like, I booked us tickets for front row tickets. It's, it's this little playhouse called Annick. So you might have to skip karaoke because I was meant to be hosting karaoke at MCM in place of Andy. Andy had passed me on to do it. <laughs> I need to Annick before as a kid so I knew that it was in um, Cumbria which means fuck all to the most of you but that's um, it's the, nor- it's the northernmost county on the east side of the UK so it's basically it's basically we're basically Scotland and um, I was meant to be in London and so I send her a text that says babe do you know where Annick is and she's like no so I just send her the Google Maps picture and she's like oh shit <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figure out how to pass karaoke on and I, from what I've heard um, Colin, did, Colin did an absolutely fantastic job of sort of last minute taking over my sort of scattered organizing while I was doing this but um, yeah so we went to Annick and there's no way there's no there's no way I can tell the story without telling you how bad the traffic on this one specific (laughs) that's so English of you (laughs) like so we so my friend so Katie and I we have to leave at a certain time Katie's the friend who drove me because we're both getting our nails done beforehand we we can't we can't go and see Colin Neal with shit nails like we're not doing that we're not doing that (laughs) (laughs) just black um so when we get out of Sheffield it's like traffic is awful literally from the moment we leave what's what's meant to be a three hour drive becomes like four and a half oh jeez which I know isn't long in American terms but when you're a Brit and you've got a little car and you're on a <laughs> tight schedule, it's it's a long time. Like we try and stave off some of the traffic by going to Greg's and my mates come over from Germany. So you've got him in the back of the car because <laughs> I took him out the night before. And um, so we planned on getting to Annick by about half five. We got there and Katie and I got into our hotel room at 20 past. I mean, the event didn't start till 7.30. So you were, we, you were still good. You were planning for early. So we, we wanted to get there for seven because there were a few other people people in the uk that i'd wanted to speak to but like a few like to us and me i knew from other events so we planned on getting there early and also we somehow managed to pull it off and i want to give a shout out to nigel the taxi driver because he was <laughs> nigel the taxi nigel! driver nigel! Nigel! yes nigel! hero hero of the fandom <laughs> nigel the taxi driver <laughs> seven, katie and i get our glasses of wine we have a little sit down with our friends it's lovely and then oh it's a film screening that has wine available yes yeah, is UK this baby. Is this just a, ra- it's just a <laughs> random theater in the UK. So they've all they've all got bars. Every theater in the UK has a bar. Oh, amazing. So we just we so we went to get a glass of wine. We're sort of sitting down talking to our mates. We're about to go in about ten minutes before this is, and then Katie hears his voice, and there is this pillar. Why like, <laughs> does that curtain behind me like all the way? If you can imagine that, Katie hears his voice, and we're all thinking he's working. We're not going to bother him because like that seems rude, right? Yeah. So before this happens, and then I don't know, I I don't know why he does this, but he comes around the thing and he's like, "Krill, I'm so glad you're here," and pulls me into the hug. And I'm, so it's a it's a really really long hug, and I'm just yeah. sort of like, well, I'm, I I think I, I thank him. I'm not really sure what's going on because I was not expecting this to happen. And then as he pulls back, I'm just like, the traffic on the A1 was really bad. I, I mean, like, eh? and then we chat to him for a little bit, and like he's, I'm really sorry, I have to go in, and we're like, we have to, we have to go. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the, the film is that. The whole film festival was absolutely fantastic. There was a lot of like really like they had the first section was all the young filmmakers, like people in their teens, and okay. they were all absolutely the films were absolutely fantastic. There were a couple on um, so the one that Con promoted on his story earlier, I think I think it was called Three Out of Four, but I can't remember because I saw it. And and that was I was fully I was fully absolutely sobbing. It was a beautiful, oh. beautiful art. So everything that was at the Annick Film Festival, I just want to say I'd fully recommend watching because these people are absolute fucking geniuses and it was really, really, really oh. touching to get to see them premiered. His film. Yeah. I don't want to give spoilers, but it was I think harrowing is the best way harrowing. to describe it. Okay. Absolutely beautiful. It was a really, really, really good film. But um if you're going into it expecting to see a really like touching queer love story about people no oh my it's God. Not. That, that's that's not what that is i just want to that's not what that is um so no it's not a is. it's not a touching queer love story it's like a angst filled like a distressing distressing seems mean but it's angst filled it is queer it is uh-huh. queer. it is angst filled everyone i know that went to see it has called it dark yeah. Uh, yes. So yeah, is it like a torture your gaze sort of? No, it's not. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I really, really, really hope it does get like a wider release because it is again, it's really, it's really, really beautiful and it's touching. But 
Oh, yeah. at, the, at the end of it, my friend leaned over to me because obviously this was on the 25th and the finale and aired on the 26th. And she just leaned over to me and said, he's in deep shit. Deep shit because he made you <laughs> feel things that you weren't prepared to feel. Yeah. A year after, a year after the, um, the bad thing happened on yeah, the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. We made us feel things again, and we were not prepared for that. Oh. So we did the whole we did the whole Q and A, and the Q and A was really, really interesting. Like Katie and I were ripping each other throughout the whole thing because we couldn't, and we didn't say anything because we talked to him before, and we were going to talk. We we're hopefully going to talk to him after, so we weren't trying to take up other people's time. It wasn't because we didn't, you know, it wasn't because we couldn't think of how to use words. We were absolutely <laughs> right. it was fantastic, and um, and then after we. Waited downstairs and didn't come up. Then we went upstairs and he he literally gave us a look that was just like, the fuck have you guys been? Because we were waiting on the right floor. It's like, sorry. <laughs> and then we chatted with, we chatted with them until the theatre closed. And, and so, so awesome. this ended up being about 15 minutes, a 15 minute chat. Um, about 15, 20 inside. And then, um, wow. A few people, a few people stayed to speak to him outside, and I knew he he was kind of saying that he had to get back, and he was like trying to find his mate. So at that, at that point, my friend and I were like, okay, we're we're going to go to the pub over the road. Um. So we, yeah, we went and did that. But yeah, we, he stayed with us. He stayed with us for ages, and then he walked into the fucking pub after. And we had to do the most awkward, like sort of white people wave, <laughs> like something we think, but like we saw him and he saw us, and we was like, "We're so sorry. This wasn't planned." He followed <laughs> you, stalking you. He followed you into the pub. He could see where we were going because we waved him off. We went over the road. We were talking about it. So like, I don't know. That was not. That was not on us. But yeah, it was. The whole day was absolutely. Both wild. Yeah. What did we so talk happy. about? Do, do you remember what you talked about? And um, we talked about a lot. So I, so I am, not, I am now the reason that Con knows when Izzy's when when the bad thing happened. Oh, because because oh. you saw him on the anniversary of the bad. Thing. Yeah, because I was actually going to. I was. I'm going down. I was going down to London the day after because I was meant to be at MCM. <laughs> and I was meant to be going in the karaoke. And last Saturday, 26 was the anniversary of the bad thing. So my friends and I had all planned a wake for Izzy. We had we had like we had a few more pamphlets. I had a framed picture in my suitcase. So we made a joke and like I added onto it and he looked so so like genuinely concerned that I hadn't trigger warning somewhat proper. So I, had, I very quickly jumped in. I was like, no, no, it's because this is when this happened, thinking he knew and he also <laughs> No, he doesn't know anything. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. So funny. For a decent amount of time. We were like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. I'm not upset with you. Oh my god. Oh, so I'm yes. glad you told him you weren't upset with him because he was very nervous about premiering this and said that um w whether it goes to other places will depend on how it's received there so um it, it was received well i want to say it was like by those of us who are there I'm not like i'm really glad i'm here now to like sort of like big the whole thing up as well because it was really it was a fucking beautiful piece of art yeah. i'm really glad we got to go yeah I, I loved it i understood what was going on and i'm pretty fucking stupid to be honest like i'm not a film person <laughs> i understood it if i get it and i think other people will say but, um, no, he said he was very pleased with um the audience reaction and everything so good. I, i'm very yeah. glad that it all went well for him and that it went well for you guys too we had a few comments in the chat that um i wanted to mention m baldo says mm. i am 64 Five massive OFMD fan. I cosplay as Steed and Mothman Pride Flag. You guys, we we failed our boomer age American our flag fans by saying there weren't any. There are. Oh no, yeah. I don't think we meant it that way. Uh, yeah, because yeah. there's definitely a lot of. Um, I don't want to say older because I don't feel like you guys are yeah. older. older than me. Older than me fans. There's a ton of you guys in the fandom and you're mm -hmm. awesome. And yeah. I've seen so many people who are boomers or whatever go, you know, being out in the cons at cosplay and whatever, you know, like very, very active part of the fandom because the show is about like not young people finding themselves later in life. So it appeals to everybody. Yeah. Speaking of which, shout out to Pirate Nana just because I love Pirate her Nana. everywhere that I see her. So, yeah. And uh, Mr. Button says, what AO3 tags would you give the movie, Krill? And the, the movie is called The Men and it's yeah. written and directed by Con O'Neill. Yes, no. written written by and starring in, in. okay yeah. and then the other guy um chris i can't i can't remember chris's surname which i did and the other actor is paul again comes but again lovely lovely bloke we chatted to him after as well yeah. <laughs> what i give this i was like living 
vicariously through krill and a couple other people that were there irene fucking adler flew over to go to just to go to this premiere oh wow and, oh, wow so, she's been everywhere this year <laughs> oh my god she yeah and she's going to airport con and she's going to columbus mm-hmm. she's she's like uh, and and con was you yeah, know for them as well it's just um, it's just like hello there again but uh, I- um giving what what type what AO3 tags would I give this? Um I would give Hurt No Comfort, but <laughs> I would give Age Gap, I would give Major Character Death. Ooh, age I, gap. Love a good age gap. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I, I when is this That's gonna be on YouTube? <laughs> so I say just censor every single thing that I say and then we're saying. So that was that was gonna be my question is like so um I know that we've been like occasionally a lot of people are trying to push things for various folks like when Uproar came out, Restarby Faction was like, We're gonna get this fucking movie, you know, getting up there and I know mm-hmm. we've been trying to push for like advanced chemistry for Samba. Like, is there anything we can do for the men? It's a short film, so it's it's short hard film. for a short film to get any distance distribution yeah. so i think what we what we can hope for is that con and this chris fellow decide to put it up on you yeah. or chris, yeah chris is big on yeah the go on i've got is like it's everyone who's been there so it's everyone who's been there like promoting it which my friends and i have been doing as much as we can i mean given that i then had to pop off down to london to go to this wake but um <laughs> we, it's it's promote it's promoted it because one of the other ones again the one that i mentioned earlier is now up on youtube and con was promoting it earlier oh good mm-hmm. okay so good and stuff that the playhouse does and promoting what he does like as best we can. I mean, now I'm feeling like more yeah. Exactly. Well, now I'm feeling less like run down. I'm going to try and do a, a lot more for it and stuff. So like, it's just it's promote the hell out of it, and then okay. hopefully it'll get a release elsewhere because it is really really good. And yeah. You can see it. I think that he it might take it to some other film festivals possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that he's. He, I don't know. He's like wary of these like big releases for stuff he's written. Like he has written and, and uh, acted in and and directed. I believe the other one, a, a short film in 2024 that has never seen the light of day. Like he's. He mentioned that to us actually after the thing. So yeah. That, yeah. I haven't even heard of it. You can watch it like in some <laughs> like British film museum only where you're not allowed to take video cameras in and you're what? like, it's, yeah. And <laughs> I was like, cold? no, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> and, I went to the thing with has seen it because he went to go and see it and do all that when he was. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was like, okay. Conwer, can I watch this? And he was like, oh, I have a DVD somewhere. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> So I've been pushing for that one, but this one's going to be a little easier. So, yeah. Which shall we move on to Khan is in the Penguin? He is. He is. He's adorable. And the Penguin is, I have to say, like one of the better shows that have come out recently. It's really good. Yeah. And he was in episode five and I, he will be in another episode, at least another one, but okay. it's very small, like clips, Yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, we hate to support Max, but the show is really good. <laughs> so, so I do recommend watching it. Uh, and shall we move on to Reese Darby news? Yep. That man, Reese Darby is booked and busy. And yeah, he is, he is he preparing is. for his famous era. And if God, you know, he's just like raking in the roles next year. I is going to be like a restarby in all the shit year 2025. Oh, what was that? My mom is so excited. She's such a restarby girl. Oh isn't? my gosh. Your Free mom girly. and me need to be best friends. <laughs> Reesey girlies together. Yes. So he's doing comedy shows in India. In Apple, is that Indiana? Yeah. I, I saw I and I was like, it's in, both <laughs> Indiana and Indianapolis, um, which is apparently the same place. And also Missouri at Helium Comedy Club sometime soon. November no, no. 7th and November 8th. OK. And the 7th in uh, I'm sorry, the 8th in St. Louis, I think is sold out. Oh, um, wow. or Indianapolis is sold out. I can't remember what are the two. Um, yeah, St. Louis is the one that sold out. Indianapolis, you can still get regular tickets, but I guess somebody bought the like big 
come in for a private room event. So we've got some Reesey girlies in there somewhere. <laughs> wow, Midwest Reesey girlies. I want to hear from you. Write in, tell us your experiences. Tell us if you want to be on the podcast to talk about Reese Darby in the Midwest. And that's exciting. And uh, his his buddy, his New Zealand comedy buddy, Steve Wrigley, was like, he's going to give away a cup that <laughs> Reese held, a cup <laughs> that Reese looked at, and a cup that Reese looked at for like a few seconds. Yeah. Which he, kn- you have to give him this. He knows his audience is capitalizing on that. Yes. Uh, good good for him so that christmas oh and then in in before we get into that christmas uh reese is doing another show in la in december and so i'm really excited about that one because i will be going again and maybe we'll end up eating at the same restaurant together again me and reese and we're gonna be totally cool if we do see him out and about in the wild we're not going to be crazy at all i'm i was just waiting for ringa to jump in and say like laugh about us not being i'm so sorry i had to blow my nose i'm having allergies what did you say i was just saying that when we when we go see reese's show in december in la uh and if we eat at the same restaurant again we are going to be very normal and oh no not, you won't. and i was waiting for you to hop in and say no you won't <laughs> well there you go you got it we're gonna be very normal he's gonna reward us by when we're normal he's gonna reward us for our good behavior by giving us a little thumbs up and a little smile It'll be nice. that would be yeah. so nice Fantastic. see you uh, you see like i love reese so much i literally don't think i could be in the same room with him because the few celebrities i have been in the same room with i have like verbally vomited all over them because <laughs> Because, like, I just get so excited. And, like, I just, I'd be like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Rosie, Aww. on the other hand. Rosie, I want to have talks with you about cats. She yeah. is, like, big into the cats right Listen, now. Listen, <laughs> Reese would talk to you about cats, too. Yes. He'd be happy to talk to you about cats. Oh, here's my gosh. A, here's the thing. Yeah, on the two times I got to, like, talk at Reese, I definitely verbally loved bombed him. And blo- it was just like, and, you know. He's used to it. But he's also like, you know, he's he's not he's not like a Con O'Neill who's going to be like. Oh, no. But here's yeah, the no. thing. Like, if you do it somewhere at like a show and not like at a convention, it's way different because he gets massively overstimulated. At conventions. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Right, can imagine. And, right. But like you can tell he like the energy drains out of him. Krill, what did you say? Oh, just I just went for drinks with some of my mates after the Manchester show. I couldn't stick around, but that was that was a whole thing that happened. So yeah, it's completely yeah. yeah, yeah. He likes the attention and and stuff, but like he is also uh I, I want to say neurodivergent in some way that makes him shut down when there's too much going on. Yeah. I, I relate. Just our office party Christmas. I was like, <laughs> I was yeah. feeling that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You can see at the end of a like two day show, even convention, like he'll, he'll just be dragging and like totally mm-hmm. zero battery. But when he's like out in his element doing his performance, you know, he's very energized and wants yeah. to chat and stuff so depends on where you catch him but so but london got another taste of reese with the that christmas premiere and you you instantly knew that it happened because twitter was just all these photos of reese in his blue plaid pattern suit with like a gray shirt underneath and it was very it was giving it was very reese (laughs) it was dapper it was giving dapper it was giving dashing it was giving celebrity when is reese gonna be the next a-lister why is he not the robin williams of his generation when why is hollywood going to understand that this man you have the the next big thing you have the answer didn't you say it was like when his like oh yeah yeah i know mercury enters his like 
like Lake Placid. When he's and 61. Lake Placid. There you go. <laughs> yeah. With, from the age of 61 to 83, that is going to be 63 to 81. I got the numbers backwards. From okay. 63 to 81, that is going to be his most famous era. Abby, you're new here. I love t- uh, teasing Carly about her uh, but, as- astrology girliness. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I was there. I was like, Lake Placid? Like Lake Pontchartrain? Or what was the, what was the one he just went to in uh, Scotland? Oh, Loch Ness. Nessie, oh, Loch, Loch, Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. <laughs> when his Mercury retrogrades into Loch Ness. Yeah. When his uh, when his Ness, Loch Ness monster enters the sixth house. I love it. <laughs> so uh, so that Christmas, I'm trying to keep this on topic. We have it. We're forty. It's not. Yeah. It's not. Thing. It's not happening, girl. It's. And I'm just I, trying to chug ahead with all the news. I know. I just want to apologize. I am not a good person to have on topic. Like I, I think that was so great. We <laughs> should change the name of this to the Gay Pirate Hour Ish, Gay Pirate News Hour Ish, Gay Pirate News. However the long it takes. There you go. Then it'll keep the same acronym. He's he's shooting the Z Suite, a new comedy show in Toronto, and it's. It looks like a half hour comedy. It looks like he's only maybe in the first couple episodes. Uh, he plays a, it sounds like a ad executive type person. Um, and it's about like an ad agency that gets taken over by, they, they kick all the boomers out and they have the Gen Z people do run the the firm oh. is that, that it that's the know. premise of the show and is he the boomer that they kick out it sounds like he is he's described as uh, like an executive who is always right and who always knows what he's talking about i should have written something down on here about it i'm i'm giving my understanding based on <laughs> something i read like two weeks it's ago all good we no that's great things. it's it sounds like it's one of the characters from short poppies oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's, you that's know funny. we can count on reese whatever it's if it's a ad executive something you know he's going to take it to 13 mm-hmm. out of 10 it's going to be going to be great it's going to be great he'll oh, be the, uh, like the only ad guy I ever like is is going to be restarted. Yeah. Yes. What was the um he his one character just got a plush toy? What what was that from? Do you Oh, do you, Monsters at Work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was real excited. I think that happened in the past yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah, that where did. he had it was like the first ever thing he's voiced or done or whatever that that has a toy and I know he was so excited about that cuz he's like a big geek like all of us. So, he he was like, "Yay!" playing with it and then we can all buy it and we can all put him on our pillow while we sleep i have a con o'neill pillow that i sleep with oh and it's not weird because he knows about it and approves nice (laughs) love hurts trailer also (laughs) dropped and this this is a movie with uh ki hui kwan and it comes out February 7th, and it looks fantastic. Reese is in it, but he was not in the trailer. So that means his character is going to be like some sort of surprise that is going to be just off the charts. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. The Daily Doodles on on Substack Mm -hmm. and the 25th anniversary show stuff on Substack. Uh, Wonderful. Good time. If you aren't on Restarby's Substack, what are you doing yeah. yourself? Look at your life. Look at your choices. <laughs> I have several Substack subscription, paid subscription giveaway account. Like I can give away a month of Restarby uh, Substack su- subscriptions. So I'm going to do a giveaway at some point on the Instagram, the Our Flag Means Fan Fiction Instagram. So watch our Instagram, watch the comments that we put on things. Cause I'll do something like if you reply to this, this post i will give you a Substack subscription or something i don't know cool. yeah excellent we love free things the cryptid factor 100th episode dropped Ooh. with Ooh. with buttons, buttons. Being named in the title yay i was, was so excited yeah. yeah that was the london show that hattie went to and Hattie gave us a full report on the Cryptid Factor live shows FOMO episode that we did here on the Our Flag Means Fan Fiction podcast. So if you want to know what it was like to be there in the audience, to give the boys a high five on the elevator afterwards. Escalator. 
escalator. Thank yeah. you. The elevator's a little harder for that. You have to be in the elevator. It's like <laughs> oh you on God. top of the elevator and like pop open that thing. Like, hey, now that would freak Reese out. Yeah. If you open the top of the elevator and pop down into it. <laughs> and Reese is doing a voice on, wait, he's doing like a, a character on Star Trek, right? Yeah, he's going to be in person. Yeah. In yeah, live he, action? He, oh, for yeah. His whole body. His, voice. his whole body. <laughs> body. No, his whole forget. body is going to be on. How Star do you know Trek, that? Strange New be, Worlds. He could be a floating head. You don't know. <laughs> he no. he could. Although they did say it. They said he's a reoccurring character. Isn't in there Star Trek? floating heads in Star Trek? And he's a character yeah, that. They Star know Trek what we want. So will know. I'm just saying, you don't know for sure. I, you know, you're right. I don't know for sure, but I can dream. Some kind of a, you know, um, I don't know. What was Doug Jones in, in, uh, just discovery. Like he could be some kind of monster critter where you don't actually see his real flesh or like Dominic Burgess. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's great. I'm fine with that. Cause they have a lot of those in star Trek. I am not obviously a star Trek person, but I like it enough, but I'm not like, Oh my God, star Trek. So from people who like know star Trek, it was said that he was going to be a character that star Trek fans would recognize what theories on what this is, what this maybe he will be um, data's cat. Okay. There's been, I, so there's, Carla goes, okay. I'm, I'm uh, looking in the chat for any comments. There's uh there's Dax. They've they've questioned whether or not he's going to be a previous version of Dax. And uh, um, for those of us who are don't know what that is. Oh, you, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dax is a uh character that uh trying to I think it's Krill, that they're Krill and uh what it is is that they they're kind of like the the fun every time they die they become a new person because they like have a this thing in the back of their head that like they take over the host of another person and then they become that person so they have all the experiences of these previous people of various different things and um dax is one of the characters from uh deep space nine okay. and uh so there was a lot of speculation that maybe he was a previous version um it's too bad Tessa's not on this one because she is hardcore into Deep Space Nine. And this particular iteration of Star Trek is called Strange New Worlds. Is that right? And what do so, we what do we know about this show? Uh, for so, those who watched it, so Strange New Worlds is um, it's it's set in like pre Kirk time. I mean, technically Kirk is is in it, but it, it's supposed to be everything like leading up to that it's supposed to be before the original series okay and so we get a lot of the the precursors okay to that. see i was mixing it up with lower decks and thinking it was a cartoon oh my god lower decks <laughs> oh, okay so this oh, is, this I is know. so good who's playing kirk in this if it's a prequel it's i do not know the actor's name but he's 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 young uh he, he better be yeah it, like it's uh, what is his name i'm totally spacing <laughs> on uh the captain's name uh strange new worlds don't worry i'm not looking this up online or anything right oh, now live yeah you totally can um and feel <laughs> free to respond to what people are saying in the chat oh yeah uh, yeah oh captain I watched pike the, that was it. the first yeah. season of discovery because of jason isaacs and um that was great so i highly recommend the first season of star trek discovery for jason isaacs and everyone else it was really good too but i mean you know just jason isaacs who was in khan's first short film um, nice decent so Isaacs is great circle i love him and rosie is seriously trying to get those kittens adopted that they're the the darby family is fostering and here's the thing like those kittens are living the life in a celebrity huge celebrity home in also Studio city nobody like agreed to take them right theo just brought them in and was like guess what and like i guess they're like <laughs> destroying things right now i guess they've like well, the dog has they, yeah the they've do- teamed up with the dog the dog and the dog <laughs> and bumbles are like opening doors and then like i guess the recent one was that bumbles's paw was like opening a metal can of food yeah. like <laughs> they like let the kittens out of their room the dog <laughs> and the other cat and now gizmo's off somewhere like asleep gizmo yeah. is not participating in this nonsense gizmo has better things to do but 
Because Mo's too fat for that. Yeah, the other two, they're like letting the kittens loose in the house, breaking into the food, getting so (laughs) Rosie's like, please come take these kittens. Those kittens are now used to a certain lifestyle. Well, (laughs) like if I were to adopt them, they would get in a, a one bedroom tiny apartment and they would be like, what the fuck is this? I yeah. came from a giant Studio City house and into this tiny Glendale apartment. And like where we were told there would be a restarby to nap on. Where yeah. is our restart now? <laughs> it would be like, we demand a refund for our experience. So yeah. uh, anyone who has a home comparable to Restarbies <laughs> should adopt those kittens. If so I could get my <laughs> ass out to California, I would adopt those kittens. So <laughs> see if I'll meet you halfway. Go and adopt some kittens. Yes, please do. Help the Darby family. Taika News, um, Moana 2. Woo! Oh, who wants to talk yeah. about Because I know nothing about it. Oh. Oh. I don't. Yeah, I don't really know much about the second one, except for that it has a it has a version that's all in Maori, and it that does. is what he was very excited about. David Fane does a voice in both versions, I think. Right, he does a mm-hmm. voice in the English version too. And um, I know Taika was originally set to direct the first Moana and mm-hmm. had to pull out, but he gave Hey Hey its name, mm-hmm. and that is my Moana trivia for you. I mm-hmm. love it. And Jermaine's in it. it in the first one. And Jermaine's Moana. in it he, as the giant crab. The giant crab. Shiny. Shiny. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and Moana 2 <laughs> just broke 2024 record, 2024's record for most one day ticket pre sales for an animated feature. And Rachel House is also in it. Nice. Oh, love it. Yeah, that's great. I loved the first Moana. It was very good. So it's I'm so sure good. the second one will be amazing. Do not go to karaoke with me. I will sing Moana. Excellent. Yes. And Taika has a new show that is Interior <laughs> Chinatown. Which yes. What streaming service is that on? Anyone know? Hulu, I believe. Okay. Should should be good. Looks kind of like a thriller comedy. It's so Chloe, kind of Chloe Bennett is amazing. I love her. If anybody uh, is a Marvel fan, she was uh sky or daisy in mm-hmm. agents of shield and she's great and I-, I can't wait to watch this it looks so fun and so uh, yeah we talked about their zero halloween That's yes my, with my his, lips are- someone put a gif of him doing the the blade and wrote mr wavy blade on it oh i love that <laughs> so that brings us to samba news and samba samba the never before seen bts of steed saying babe babe which would would have been the last line of season two steed how do how do we feel about that it was beautiful it it was wonderful and it broke tumblr tumblr like lost it (laughs) like they were gone that babe was trending just the word babe it was fantastic tumblr is fucking insane Uh, i loved it so much because it was like People were just like responding to each other with one word, babe, 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 babe. (laughs) My favorite is like on Twitter, it will like give me a recommended like news stories that it creates, you know, and it'll be like trending in our flag means death babe you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just so funny it's like and i'm like thank you that tells me nothing do you think the show would have been better if it had ended that way you know i, I, I me and krill are exempt from this question you know, so <laughs> because yeah because I, you have I, other issues I, I, have, I can't remember the last 15 minutes of the episode i've never rewatched it so I, well, I just remember that moment when izzy's hand comes out of the grave yeah that was a good fade to black oh. yeah that was good yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we we don't answer this. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought it was good. I thought it was a, I thought it was a good little seed moment. I thought he's our main character. Let's let's end with him. It's lots of character things are happening. We just with that line, babe. I loved it. It was great. It was great. Why get it the final cut? I have to say that, like, I love that Samba keeps doing these things where he is like torturing, but not quite. Oh. Torturing the fandom with like things that we didn't know happened, like the de- the zaddy thing <laughs> yeah, months and months which ago, is and now it's babe. I just like that was my favorite the zaddy thing because absolutely <laughs> insane. And Reese barely could handle that a- as a person. He He's so like, mad. okay, <laughs> Mr. Buttons posts in the chat that babe is that. babe is not BTS. It was a deleted edit. Oh, and I'm that's sorry, I'm sorry. basically BTS at this point because 
we didn't get to see it in the show but yeah it's yeah agreed yeah <sighs> yeah i think uh, i think my favorite face in any bts was the was a uh, rubo Kwan, Kwan's, how do i never say her name right Rebo, rui bo kwan is that right oh, yes yes maybe <laughs> i i apologize rubo my, my pirate queen i'm so sorry um is her face when like oh Ed my god zaddy and she's just like everyone's face <laughs> they're all like holding it together just barely and then reese is like whatever that means <laughs> like anyway yeah anyway that that's the best it was like I'm not even gonna he's usually so down to like riff off of Taika and that was like the one he was like no we're not going we're no 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice BTS it was a nice deleted we're scene I'm here. kind of glad Zaddy <laughs> didn't make it into the final edit though yeah, yeah. I would have been okay with babe Zaddy it would have been a bit, bit much I think uh Samba is doing <laughs> death by cheese on December 9th with Woo! momentous uh Samba is also doing in the new Jurassic Park cartoon on Netflix and doing black ops six voice acting and monster high voice acting if you haven't watched Samba's uh latest promo video for his death by cheese class you must as soon as this is over this youtube that you're watching right now or podcast you're listening to finish this first and then go to samba's social media and watch it because it is delightful and features a certain con o'neill talking about cheese which is like my two favorite things in the world yeah. it's so <laughs> good yeah con o'neill makes a nice little cameo in that and christian uh christian narn is doing his book thing and djing thing and he was at a certain con recently with being interviewed by nathan that was mcm wasn't it yeah yeah was, I, I i didn't i didn't make it i didn't i ended up not going to mcm at all because mm. I, was, I was traveling down from um Anik, but i was in i was in the vicinity of london and a lot of my friends went and they enjoyed it so yeah and i just speaking of the wolf every time christian does a live and he's talking about things and he brings out a bunny because he loves bunnies and everyone in the comments goes nuts saying wolf and he has every time has no idea what we're talking about and it's my favorite thing i love him yeah. so much he's like this is not a wolf this is a rabbit like i, I have a feeling just has never watched the show he's no not. but it's <laughs> but it's like happened several times now and i'm like do you not remember this from last time <laughs> it's adorable I, just I, I love him i last for my last Calypso's birthday party, which we'll talk about later, I had we have a, a demon baby doll in the bar and I dressed her. She has a bunny costume and there was a scavenger hunt for the show. And one of the questions was what season two character is Violet dressed as? And she was in the um. bunny costume and people kept like one person wrote a rabbit i don't know why i expected people to write the rabbit people wrote the wolf and people wrote steed bunnet and those are my favorite things i just love the fandom like you you keep on nathan news and uh, nathan went to italy and i also saw that there were podcast downloads from italy so that's nice that nathan was listening to our show carly you're my favorite <laughs> i should have put on a little clown nose while i was saying that you should have but you know it's also really nice uh taika and Rita were in in Japan, you know, doing a Rita concert there. And, and it was they were nice. listening? Yeah, it was nice. We got some podcast downloads from Japan while they were there. It's <laughs> cool that they're a fan of the show and very supportive of our podcast. I love how this entire cast is like... They're so cool. into listening to this show. Hi, guys. Welcome. Hi, you guys. Hi, Taika. Yeah. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> did you did you get downloads from Nick last weekend? I'll have to check. Wow. No, don't. Con O'Neill does not know what a podcast is. No news. Vico is voice acting <laughs> and telling other people how to voice act, right? And looking so cute. Looking so cute. And always yeah. like traveling and looking hot and eating things and drinking things. So Vico things. is zaddy. Vico is the encompassment of the word zaddy because vika looks amazing a hundred percent of the time yeah yeah that is very and true and who can tell us about drag your king i don't like, know anyone that went i was gonna say i didn't go but they you can watch it on youtube now um mm -hmm. they did momentous did get it up there and um i i started putting together a synopsis for it and i i really think it's worth watching so i'm not going to go too much into it but like one of the things that vico really gets into is they they talk about how 
uh, I guess when they started doing uh, being a drag king, um, they didn't know drag king was a thing. They had heard drag queen, not drag king. And um, that the whole, it just was so empowering, just so empowering to, to let you feel creative and like really be whatever means something to you. And like they were talking about their Puerto Rican heritage and stuff that got to get pulled into it. And I guess the entire point of the workshop was very specifically to help you, the viewer, kind of like creatively find what what it is that, you know, you can bring out with yourself. And so I I highly recommend watching it. It's it's yeah. pretty great. I definitely want to watch it. I was like on a weekend trip away during that, so I didn't get to see it live, but I am very into all that stuff. So here we go. And Rory Kinnear is on October 31st, which has passed because today is the second. <laughs> Sorry. Rory in Netflix uh, season three of The Diplomat. Has anyone watched The Diplomat? What is that show about? It's about a diplomat, I'm assuming. I'm just judging by the title, it's about a diplomat who murders. That sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, probably. I, guess. I haven't even heard of season one and two of The Diplomat, honestly. And it got a third season. Good yeah. for it. I mean, yeah, I'm sure other things, so. it should have third seasons. He's been in everything lately. Yeah. Rory Kinnear. Really like, serious. he's been in all he's sorts of TV shows. Show. And then like, he's one of them in everything lot. Yeah. It says, amid an international crisis, a career diplomat juggles her new high-profile job as ambassador to the United Kingdom and her turbulent marriage to a political star. Who murders. Who murders. <laughs> <laughs> he murders people and she has to cover it up because she's a diplomat. She doesn't want to lose and her job as a diplomat. She's a murderer. Only Carrie murders in the embassy. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Russell plays the diplomat. So, oh. And then there's a podcaster who is one <laughs> of the murders and finds out the diplomat is involved somehow. Oh, Michael McKean is in this. Right. I'm going to have to watch the diplomat. And see I'm going to have to watch it because, yeah, I love Michael McKean. And Anna Pella is in Tina. Tina. Uh, Tina yeah. 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 Which we talked about very briefly last uh, month because there was a premiere for it that David Fane was at. Um, but yeah, is it like available now to watch? Um, it's not quite available uh, in, uh, certainly not here in America where I'm at. Well, why um, would it be? <laughs> yeah. In, in New I guess in uh, Aotearoa, it's going to be available, I think thought it was january but i'll double check oh wow that's far, um, far from now yeah it's oh i'm sorry february 27th it uh i think what you were Damn. mentioning ringo was the hawaii international film festival they had it earlier this uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so it's it's going to be actually doing a national release so not just a small release cool. in uh february 27th now let's get into fandom news you guys wrote a lot here and we'll try to go through it really fast everybody loves us they want to hear our voices so yeah right. who put in the fan who put in all the fandom news here uh, i did bring it go through it no i don't have it up <laughs> I, put it in the chat. Okay. I only have the part oh. the end part up that says that i have it the last the last thing i have separate but then all that stuff I don't have. Uh, so let's see. So the very first one I think I added was the uh, Tiny Crew Big Raffle. Um, so in case y'all aren't already aware, you can win some of Auntie's boats uh, from this uh, awesome group that's been working on getting those raffled those off. Those boats originated from the auction that was in New Zealand. Yes. And Lindsay yes. Kentrell made them. Where do we go to participate in this raffle? Um, so you can go to lots of different places. Their Instagram, I believe, is just tiny crew big boats. Uh, let me just double check that real quick here. Oh, it's ofmd.buys.boats. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that's the same name on like all the platforms. Yeah, um, Facebook, it's OFMD Buys Boats. Yeah. Yeah. And they are, they're fantastic. And like, like you said, Ringa, uh, those were made by Lindsay and she did confirm that those are in fact authentic. Yes. Um, so if you want one, all you have to do is donate to one of the charities that they are doing and they're doing them for a bunch of the actors. Like they have the, the mermaid. What is it? The, Mermaids UK. Mermaids yeah. UK for Con. Mm -hmm. um, Which is <laughs> Foster a, a, Kittens. <laughs> for Mermaids UK is a trans uh, it's a charity. charity. Oh my God. <laughs> UK. Um, so two of my tattoos are my garlic that you Aww. can see. And my Aww. 
Oh, I mean, that's awesome. They were drawn by um, Damien Gerard, who plays Ed's dad in season one. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Yes. Busy. And like I said, as a sort of bit, I was like, Damien, if you win, I'll get one of your drawings tattooed. The chat was dead split between which one I should get. So I got both of them. And he donated money to Mermaids in favor of them. So like. Oh, that's so them. sweet. Oh, so, yeah. yay. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the charity cons. Uh, yes. Yeah, so class benefited too. Yeah. yeah. And. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, when we all did the Izzy zine uh, yeah. a little while ago, that was what the charity that it benefited to. So, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. All right, continue. Uh, the Izzy Hands <laughs> Lives is raffling off zines signed by Khan. Donate to one of their charities to enter, and that is Izzy Hands Lives on Twitter. Then the auxiliary wardrobe zine is now on sale. It's all about Steed and his love of fashion. All proceeds benefit Care for Gaza. Steed Bonnet Zine on Instagram uh, for the link to go there. So everyone follow Steed Bonnet Zine on Instagram. For mm -hmm. our unicorn project to benefit Limb Power is still going through March 2025. At for our new unicorn on Twitter, I go there for the link. And one more song, Our Five Means Death, the Drag and Variety Show is accepting applications through November 8th. And the show is December 6th, uh, Friday at, and the show is December 6th at Galaxy Con. Yeah. And that's at one more song, OFMD on Twitter for the link. And are you, are you in it, Krill? And I'm a, I'm, a pl I'm a playing for it. I've got to get my audition. Woo! Woo Excellent. It's going to be the other half of my aunt lives in California and they've just gotten back today. So we need to like put something together, but I am going to audition for it. I'm going to Yay! Do it. Excellent. Yay. So come to it. <laughs> yeah. And Rico Rinka usually goes to those. Ringa Sun's Calypso's birthday Me. is November 9th. What <laughs> from today? Ringa, do you want to say something about that? Yes, I do. If you're anywhere near Pittsburgh, you should come to this. It's next Saturday. And we have had, um, in the past, we've had goat show up. We've had uh, lots of OFMD themed cocktails and mocktails. Uh, we have had um, surprise video cameo appearances by Con O'Neill. We have had uh, lots. That I decorate the whole bar to look like Jackie's. And then I do like last time I had Mary's art gallery in the one hallway. And I had, mm. you know, out on a back patio, I have the whole Calypso's thing with the lanterns and the flags and all that. You know, I really go all out. Um, everyone comes, you know, in the neighborhood who just likes gay parties and pirates and fun things. So I don't have, you know, like, I don't know, there's like a small amount of people that come to this that are like massively into OFMD like I am. But those people are very excited about it because I do all kinds of super geeky things for it and <laughs> make some very specific references and things. Uh, Marty, if you're still in the chat, Marty's been to all of them uh, and dresses up and it's a super good time. Lots of costumes, lots of sea shanties. We watch the show and we, you know, have fun and games and prizes and torture. And it's a lot of fun. There's no cover. You have to be 21 or over, and that is November 9th. So come on by Harold's Haunt. Excellent. I will hype that on the chat <clears throat> as well. And yes. what are you all reading? Wait. Or what? Now we get to the part where I have the thing for. Oh, I see. I understand. Now it's all coming together. Do you, Do you thing? see? Yeah, yeah. So those things that you read were like goings on, and now I have fandom events that are happening. Here we go. All right. Ready, everybody? Here we go. Okay. So right now, OFMD Gotcha for Gaza still has prompts open for writers and artists. This is the event where people made donations to Gaza charities in exchange for getting an art or fic for their prompt. And they still have um, prompts available to be filled by volunteers. So it's at OFMD Action on Twitter. Um, message them and they will show you a list of what's uh, still left and you can claim one. Um, so this weekend through tomorrow is Steed Wump Week. Um, all about beating the hell out of Steed and then kissing it better. That's going on right now. It is at Bottom Steed Week 
or hashtag Steed Wump Week on Twitter. And there are several bingo cards that you can play along with to get your things or just read what's going on with it. Now through November 15th is Our Zine Means Italia, an OFMD Ooh. zine about the revenge sailing to Italy. Now, I at first wasn't sure if this was just like for Italian fans, but it seems like it is just content about what happens when the crew goes to Italy. So it's not just for Italian people. It's for everybody who likes Italy. And that is at OFMD Italia for the link to sign up. Um, all of November, we are in right now Fluff Vember, a month of fluffy fan works at OFMD Fluff Vember for the prompt list. Uh, November 7th through the 13th, which is sometime next week. It's the 7th, the m Wednesday maybe, is Gentle Scribed Week. Oh, yes. So that is a week for all things involving the ships of Steed and Lucius, Ed and Lucius, or Steed, Ed and Lucius. Uh, it's at Gentle Scribe, which is uh, Gentle Scribe with a D at the end, on Twitter for the prompt list. November 10th through the 16th is Garlic Soup Autumn Ooh. Bingo. Um, and this one is instead of giving, like, creating new content, they're doing something that will celebrate existing content. And if you don't know, Garlic Soup is like Olu and Jim and Archie and Zhang. So um, they are at Garlic Soup Week on Twitter. There's bingo cards and they'll put more information up soon. November 24th through 30th is Our Flag Means Lesbian Week. It is a week to create fan arts featuring OFMD characters as lesbians. And it's at OFMD Lesbians on Twitter for their prompt list. Now, um, coming up next month, we have from December 14th through 15th is Get Izzy Pregnant Weekend. Uh, as as you could guess, that is all things involving breeding Izzy and or knocking him up. It is at Preg Izzy Events on Twitter. <laughs> all things involved. All of it. All if you are this. at all familiar with the canon, there's a lot. There's a lot mm -hmm. involved with getting Izzy, Izzy yeah, pregnant and breeding him. And then shortly following that, December 29th through the 4th of January is Jack Off Week, which is all about Jack doing what jack does so it's gonna be like filthy i can't even like we've had some crazy fandom events with sick stuff this is gonna like blow it all out of the water get it uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, and that is at jask off week j-a-s-c-k off week on twitter they don't have prompts up yet um they say they're coming soon get it huh? and then lastly in january it is uh the annual j and i can never know how to say this j january january oh, <laughs> right. oh, God. it's january with the with the a letters a u in it like alternative universe so it's a month of au prompts and that is o OFMD Jan U A U R Y on Twitter for their prompt list, which is already up. So if you want to plan your AU prompts way ahead of time, there you got it. That's 10 fandom events that are going on now and Ooh. soon. And I told you last month I would make a graphic to put these up on the Our Flag Means Fan Fiction Instagram, which I did not do. But if somebody pokes me to remember, I will do it tonight so that we can like maybe pin it somewhere in the thing and we can change it out every month and yeah, do you. it do it do that thing do it, do it, do it. i would i would love to add it to the repo too if possible oh, i've been working absolutely. i have a couple on there for like orange soup week but i don't have a lot of the other ones so i'd love to add that yes i am just like i don't know somehow really good at finding all these weird ass events on <laughs> twitter and like i don't know where they come like the jack off week i'm like okay <laughs> you got the hookup up on all the it's, cool shit i'm that one i don't know if i'm excited for or dreading because it's gonna be insane the, the jack girlies are gonna be nuts yes yeah. <laughs> so very good very good uh, all right let's talk about what fan fiction we're reading yes anyone read it read anything new that you want to shout out um i mean i would love to sh so i don't know how i don't know how uh how true this is um but there so there's a au but they're sexy vampires by tyler danger um, and uh, there is speculation that Tyler Danger is actually Taika um, oh. or Jemaine. And there's been a lot of speculate. We did over in the restart. In fact, Mr. Buttons can can uh, can attest for this. 
we did like handwriting analysis and shit between uh-huh. all of Tyka's pictures <laughs> and then like his the the Tyler Danger Tumblr. I learned and, a t- oh it's a Tumblr. It's not an AO3. Oh no, it's an AO3. He's on a he's on AO3 and Tumblr. Danger, all one word. All one word. Tyler Danger. And I, so the speculation is that it is Tyka. Um, and he just put out like two days ago, AU, but they're sexy vampires. And it's all about Steed as a sparkly, sexy vampire and Ed as a furry, furry werewolf. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm reading right now. So it's like a, our flag, uh, what we do in the shadows crossover almost. Sort of. Yes. Yeah. The, t- the Tyler Danger style is very goofy and that's mm-hmm. part of why we think it's him. But yeah, I don't know how true that is. So don't quote me. Well, you know, Taika doesn't write a script. He just like makes shit up on the spot. He does. So. And that's exactly what this is. <laughs> so this is like a OFMD, what we do in the shadows crossover in the style of My Immortal. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, My Immortal. This is fantastic. Love yeah, that. It's great. <laughs> All right. The previous <laughs> stuff's really great, too. There's some, there's some amazing things in this Wonderful. entire AO3. Okay. Um, I just finished reading a series called A Second Chance at First Mate by Seed Bunnett, who is an amazing author, and I've recommended a ton of their stuff here before. This is a seven work, uh, 38K series. So it's not that long, really, and it's broken into many parts. And it it takes place immediately after episode seven of season two, um, when Ed leaves and Izzy's like, let's get you back to the ship to Steed. But in this, it's a whole different ending where they actually do go back to the ship and whoops have sex and oh no um well it's interesting it starts out with izzy's like steed needs to like blow some steam off so here punch me let's fight let's get you know like beat the shit out of me that'll make you feel better and of course that can't happen without sex not in fanfic land so um so they continue having their little uh secret affair and you know what happens then feelings develop and that's awful so it's very good i really like everything steed bennett writes this one is is very nice i love a good c-fic where they are slowly developing feelings for each other and they both hate it angst i love that i'm going to have to check out Check out that one. Steed Bunnett writes a lot of Stizzy, but also a lot of uh, yeah, just the episode. We need to do a Stizzy episode. We d- we've yeah, done yeah. Stizzy episode, of course. Well, we have to do second part of our Ed Izzy. Yeah, we, yeah, we need schedule. Kind of yeah, hard. but it's Stizzy fit. I can join the Stizzy episode. But yeah. Tessa will absolutely need to be on the Stizzy episode because she's like Izzy's biggest champion. And I'm totally cool if you Ringa. Chris, oh, I will. Tessa, I'm gonna. <laughs> I call it. I claim Stizzy. <laughs> Send it into me. I'll, edit. I'll claim it. If I lose a fix, then I won't. But all right, what are you reading, Krill? Are you? Are you? I'm actually. I'm not reading anything currently because I've, I've been trying to finish my own fix. So I'm still. I've got an. So I'm. I'm. I'm writing a Stizzy fic. I've got an Edzy fic that I've got a collab that I've just announced with um Sausage Cloud on Twitter. Here is my favorite. Yes. Um, uh Sausage Sausage Cloud is the one responsible for papers, right? Yes. Yeah. If you have seen Izzy Canyon talking about papers or candles, uh, with O's at the end of the pay pours, candles. They're these adorable little drawings of Izzy. Somebody in the crew asked him what he likes. What are things Izzy likes? And he makes this list and it's like Ed, fancy papers, candles, because he can't spell right. And so like all the little cartoons have him with these candles, like candles. And with with an OL, and it's a, the cutest thing. So people Aww. in the canyon just be like candles. <laughs> it's a whole thing, but like the artist in charge, of, she's my favorite artist in the whole fandom. So I DM'd her on a whim and I was like, come work with me. Mm. And she was like, yes, I would love to. So we got this oh, whole thing. that's gonna be so good i am about to start on the recommendation of the person I'm, I'm about to start reading heart-shaped glasses by mm. i think it's florence after dark i just know them as italian florence just met them <clears throat> when i were in italy last time so I'm, I'm about to start reading that i'm so excited because katie katie keeps hyping that one up so yeah that's my that's my and of course, you have your own Stizzy AU uh, mega series that you're working on still, right? Yes, with um. Yes, yeah. It's a. I I want to. I always want to call it strictly ballroom, but that's not it, right? It's what's it called? It's strictly come dancing. It's a, so you guys have it as, da- as dancing through the stars. It's an AU based on that with a Stizzy yeah. based on them. So Steve's the celebrity dancer, and it's 
and Izzy's the celebrity that sort of goes on it just because he wants to make a bit of cash. Um, it's mm -hmm. all about his failing marriage and him meeting Steve. <laughs> yes. Strictly Ballroom is like a movie or something, right? Like, I got that from somewhere, right? <laughs> I've heard of that as well, so it must be somewhat like, yeah. Oh, it's a Baz Luhrmann movie from the 90s. Oh, it's, it's one, probably super gay then. It's just visually stunning and engaging and characters, and it's So great. gay, yeah. If you, <laughs> if you are not of the Baz Luhrmann canon of filmmaking, definitely get on Baz Luhrmann, because he does the thing. Get on Baz Luhrmann, too. <laughs> He's Australian, too. Yes. Ooh. Fantastic. Yes. Okay. And you, Carly, what are you reading? Well, I recently reread a couple times uh, Serve Who We Serve because I asked the author if I could do a pod fic of it. And so as soon as I have a spare moment, I'm going to do a pod fic of that one. That is like in one of my open tabs that I haven't read yet. That's like, it's like in my like top 10 read next so maybe i'll read it next it's so true. that i can in your 975 tabs i don't do that i have them all in my marked for later or i make collections of tabs in my browser so they're ah, not all open at once because i've smart. had my browser has crashed several times and deleted like hundreds of things <gasps> open so i now no. make collections so I, that doesn't happen because i was devastated like yeah, no. like somebody i knew died i was like <laughs> this no, i get it i get so, it okay yeah musically be spectacled is the author of ah, yes. excellent and, excellent and can i just read a comment i got on my many flags so much death which has been out for please months, do yeah but uh this commenter just wrote yesterday wow just wow just binge this and really feel like this story was my tea. It really made me feel her way with words is incredible. I wish I could write like this. It was Aww. true. And the love and the whimsy and the understanding is just mind blowing. This was definitely what I needed. The message was definitely there and well crafted. I just wanted to say oh, wow. how much the story means to me. It's perfect. I normally don't enjoy fix like this, but it was Damn. something else. I feel cured, inspired, and motivated. I'm going to go help my mental health. Sorry for rambling. To sum up, I'm just grateful for this fic. It's helped me and it's so good and well written. Thank you lots of love and magic it's been over a year i think since i've put that fic up and last updated it so fanfic authors you never know like years later i get comments still on things from like the avengers fandom from like 20 13 you know that wow. people are just discovering because like that's how you know anybody gets into things that were kind of before their time or they just now got into a fandom and mm -hmm. they go back through the tags and that's such an amazing comment and it is i am the worst at commenting on people's ao3s i'm so bad at it i will kudos all day and bookmark and etc but i i'm so bad with remembering to leave uh like actual reviews on them but authors love it even if you just say hey this was great like it gives us life and it makes us want to write more so you know please do if you have anything to say about it if you are like reading it and they're like wow i like that you know write a note and i am so bad with that i'm gonna go back through like all my bookmarks and like make little notes on all of them because of course one time i wrote like a like seven paragraph thing on one of them and the person never like wrote back to me and i was like it's okay because like you know obviously they can't answer everything and i you know that's fine it's just like i was so in love with this fic and i was just like please recognize me <laughs> yeah i know that's a big thing too though the like uh, I, I i hear a lot of feedback from people on twitter especially um where they're like I didn't answer you, but I want you to know your comment meant everything to me. Right. So like, especially they with definitely people probably who heard you. have like very large, like I have talked to them since like on Tumblr messages and stuff, you know, but uh, they, especially with people who have like massive amounts of followers and write constantly and have giant, you know, where they get comments all the time, they can't possibly answer all of them. And that's how this person was. They were like a BNF in the uh, Stony fandom and Marvel. And it was just uh, a, like a story that changed my life. And I like made them a whole like, uh, fan mix about it and stuff and they were like well that's i'm gonna awesome. go i'm gonna go listen to this as i work today and i was like that's it yay <laughs> so yeah we gotta wrap this up this has been gay pirate news hour and a half 
ish. How, however long it takes. Gay Pirate News, however long it takes. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to give us a subscribe. Uh, be sure to give us a heart and leave a comment. Uh, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Follow us on Instagram at Our Flag Means Fan Fiction, all one word. And tell your friends so this continue c- to grow. And then the more yes, people please. know about it, the more it feels like Our Flag Means Death has a fandom that continues. And then Netflix will pick us up. Yes, right. goodbye, friends. Thanks for tuning Bye. in. Bye.